Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm doing another one to answer some questions on fuel pressure regulator and testing. If you guys had watched my other video, I had the inline six, which was the Jeep 4.0. Now I got a Vortec 4.8, and that's my fuel pressure regulator right there. And it, this one is controlled by vacuum. So I'm gonna be able to do some tests and kind of show you more in depth on how it works. Before we get started on some testing, let's go over some of the symptoms again. One of them is decreased fuel economy. If your fuel pressure regulator is running too high a pressure, you could be injecting too much fuel into your cylinders. That being said, your fuel economy will be decreased. Now, of course, if you if it's not working properly and you don't have the proper fuel pressure, it's gonna work the opposite. Your engine's gonna run lean. Another symptom, which is a dangerous one, you wanna check for leaking fuel. So my fuel pressure regulator right here, as I mentioned before, is vacuum controlled. And one of the things you wanna look for, if that diaphragm inside is leaking, you'll actually be able to see fuel in this line are wet. And what happened when it's leaking is that since the engine's drawing vacuum, it will be sucking that gas inside too, which can be leading to overfueling. So if you have an issue with the no start condition, you may have a problem with the fuel pressure regulator. You can help verify that by using a pressure gauge connected to the fuel rail. Now keep in mind, not all vehicles have this setup. And also keep in mind that the problem may also be a fuel pump as well if you have a no start condition. You need to verify if the fuel pump is actually pumping fuel up to the rail and if you're indeed getting the correct PSI that is needed. Lots of other things to fuel pressure regulator issue is Plugs appear black, poor acceleration, black smoke. All these are issues related to either too low of fuel pressure, which is not enough fuel. Too much fuel pressure leads to flooding. Misfires, if you're suffering from that, can be a cause of not enough fuel. Now, of course, if you have a backfire on deceleration, when you take your foot off the gas, you probably got too much fuel. So one of the first things we're gonna do is key on, engine off, verify fuel pressure at my gauge, check, make sure I'm not leaking before we go on to the next test. Cause you don't wanna start your vehicle if you're leaking fuel, cause you may burn it down. On most vehicles, when you turn the ignition on, the fuel pump should run for at least two seconds. And as you can see, the gauge pressured up. So right now I'm reading about 50 PSI. Doesn't appear to see any leaks. Now, this can be fuel pressure regulator related. And it can also be injector issues is that leave your gauge on it for a while, five, 10 minutes and see how much it bleeds off. If it's bleeding off a lot, you could have an issue with an ejector or with the regulator. So one of the main reasons why I'm making this video is because when I was doing the LS swap in my Jeep, you always get part of a, a forum or something where people share ideas and that. And this is the, the conflict that was going on that people don't seem to understand. So. This intake is a Vortec intake. It's a late 90s, early 2000s. It has a return line. This is the very important part. It has a return line. So an LS Vortec motor is supposed to see fuel pressure of about 58 PSI. But this fuel pressure regulator is vacuum operated. So at idle, you're not going to see 58 PSI. If you're seeing 58 PSI, there's a problem. 
and I'm gonna show you exactly how that works. So when I start it up, I have a vacuum gauge in the Jeep and I'm gonna run at about, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna say about 52 PSI or whatever, given at that vacuum. All right, so let's start her up. So you can see I got a vacuum gauge and I'm at about 18 inches of vacuum. Yeah, so you can see right there, I'm running at about 50 PSI. Now what happens, the more throttle you give, the more power you need, the vacuum drops. So when I pull this vacuum line off, you're gonna see that fuel pressure jump. See, it jumped up to 60, or 58 PSI. So now you must understand how that system works. It has nothing to do on this style if you have 58 PSI, because that's not how this style is gonna work. And this is how it confuses people. And this is where people get the parts cannon out and they start replacing the fuel pump. They start replacing the fuel pressure regulator. They start doing all these things that they do not need to do. You need to understand how the system works and this is on the return line fuel pressure rail on a vortex motor this is just one example out of many and as you guys just saw the vacuum regulates the fuel pressure so now that you understand the vacuum side of it as i said my engine runs at about 18 inches of vacuum at idle. Now, of course, as you guys just seen, if my engine was worn out, the vacuum would be less. So if I was running at like five inches of vacuum because the engine was worn out, the fuel pressure is gonna be higher, is gonna be dumping more fuel in. There's many variables attached to this instead of the just the fuel pressure regulator involved. I know this video might be confusing a lot of people but you really need to understand how everything works for the system to work because for example when i had my old motor in the jeep the vacuum was shot in that when i was driving it was always at like about zero inches of like vacuum so it was just dumping fuel in fuel economy was horrible and as you can see right here I'm hoping this video helped clarify some things. So if you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. And I'll try to answer them in another video. I'll see you guys in the next one.